elected us, um, the rest of us are back there, um, to look out for candidates who can help us build working class power, right? We are not trying to become a club that puts stamps on lots and lots of candidates. We're looking for places where we can make interventions to pick fights with people that build our movement. Um, so that means we're not looking into every candidate under the sun. We're looking for ones that play a role for us. Um, so, can you just say I'm going to pass it around? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he's passing around sign-up sheets. Um, so, okay. as the elected uh, electoral research body, um, we decided to focus on criminal justice races as our first round of research, looking to prosecutorial races and judicial ones. The bad news is the judicial races are pretty grim. We do not have somebody uh, along the lines of what we've had in Houston uh, running in these judicial races. When we looked at prosecutor races, though, we found a different story. And we decided to go deep into research on two candidates. So we'll come up here to talk in a moment because while we're intending to vote on whether to do this next month, we want to make sure that nobody's getting ambushed. You get to find out as much as possible about these candidates so we can have a real conversation. Uh, so the reason why we focused on these, pro these prosecutorial races were, one, the power that they have, right? In Austin, 70% of the people in jail are in pretrial detention. That means they haven't been convicted of anything. The vast majority of prosecutions are for possession and other minor crimes. All right, and that doesn't have to be that way. We've seen insurgent leftist candidates in Queens, in Philadelphia, even in Dallas, far to the left of what we have in progressive Travis County. Uh, so we've talked to two members who I'd like to introduce you to, or to two, uh, to two candidates we'd like to introduce you to here in a minute, uh, both of whom are running on prosecutorial cam uh, platforms that are either as progressive or to the left of what you've seen out of Larry Krasner, um, who have roots in labor, Right, who have a specific class analysis and are not shy about working with a group of unruly socialists. Uh, and who in particular have a view about how we're going to have to use far beyond electoral means, right? Active agitation, direct pressure campaigns to get the policies we want. Because even if we get very progressive prosecutors, we're still going to have terrible judges in Travis County. And the way we're going to get the gains we need is by putting mounting pressure on them. Right? So that struggle is part of what we're looking for in these electoral races. So I'd like to go ahead and give a little bit of time to talk to the two people that we are going to be looking more at next month, who we will have a candidate for them between now and then for. Um, so the first is Dominic. So uh, just to introduce, Dominic is a member. Uh, he is also a member of Texas Advocates for Justice. Uh, he was a union steward, uh, and if you take a look at the platform on his website, you're going to be pretty impressed. Um, go ahead and let him talk first. Uh, Jose, if you ha have a minute here afterwards, that'd be great. Thank you so much, Seneca. Uh, thank you all to the Electoral Research Group for, for having me today. Um, before I get started, you know, talking a little bit about the campaign, um, I have some thank yous to, to say because... Um, the opportunity to be here, uh, um, I, I don't know how it happened, honestly. Uh, the only reason I'm here is because uh, I have a wife who's supportive. Uh, I have a family and friends who have uh, been there for me when I failed, uh, when I've gotten knocked, knocked down. Uh, they've been for, there for me, so, um, you know, I'm really thankful for them, and I like to thank them anytime I get the opportunity. Uh, also, um, I'm really thankful um, for the friends I've made in DSA. Uh, the first time that I canvassed uh, with DSA was for the Homes Not Handcuffs um, campaign that we had. Uh, the very first person that I door knocked with was Marina. And uh, really the, the atmosphere of inclusion, um, not being judged, really uh, the welcoming atmosphere was really, uh, really important and nice to see. So, you know, thank you to everyone I've canvassed with, whether it was for Heidi, uh, Medicare for All, Green New Deal. Uh, I really uh, appreciate y'all welcoming me into the fold. Um, the, the campaign for Travis County Attorney uh, is probably one of the most um, 
important local elections that we have. Uh, really, the reason I'm running is because we need criminal justice reform in Travis County. Like Seneca said, uh, we've got a bunch of judges that um, really have done absolutely zero to end the cash bail system in Travis County. Uh, and it's about time that they uh, get called out for it, frankly. And it's about time that we, as the voters of Travis County, held them uh, to account for their inaction. Um, you know, back in 2001, uh, I had, um, had an incident happen. I was arrested for DWI, and I found myself in Travis County Jail. Uh, too poor to afford bail, uh, not knowing how the hell I was going to get out, uh, really not knowing what was going to happen. Uh, the things I was worried about were uh, losing my job, uh, losing my housing, and having to drop out of school because I was a senior at the time. Uh, luckily, I had a friend who was able to bail me out, who uh, was able to help me uh, when I was probably at one of the lowest times of my life. Um, and what that meant for me was I was able to graduate, I was able to go back to work and pay my rent. Uh, but you fast forward 18 years later and we've still got that exact same system uh, in Travis County. A system that punishes you if you're poor, uh, especially if you're black or brown or you're in Travis County. Uh, the people in charge, they, they, don't, they don't care. Uh, they don't see it as a problem that they need to address. So I'm really hoping to uh, change that in the Travis County Attorney's Office. Uh, we're running on a platform of criminal justice reform. Uh, that means uh, decriminalizing marijuana, uh, decriminalizing homelessness, um, ending the prosecution of sex work, and ending cash bail. Uh, you know, one of the things we're going to have to overcome uh, is the, the, the status quo and the so-called progressives in Travis County. Uh, and you know, we've got great candidates like Heidi. Uh, we've got another great candidate that's gonna speak, Jose. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to knocking on doors with everyone so that we can elect people who give a damn about what happens in Travis County. So uh, thank you, Seneca, and I appreciate y'all's time. All right, so uh, next up, is uh, Jose Garza. Um, both of these people we've interviewed pretty extensively about their policy views. Jose is the executive director of Workers Defense Project, which is a worker rights organization for undocumented immigrants here in Austin, Texas. Um, he's worked with us on campaigns uh, like uh, getting paid sick leave on Freedom Cities, uh, which was the reason they're citing release in Austin, uh, and uh, somebody who has a very strategic uh, view towards how we go about picking fights here. Uh, in Travis County. So he's up next. Thank you, Senator. Uh, can you all give another round of applause for, for Dominic, please? When, when you run for office here in Travis County, the, the candidates who do that, we basically see each other every single night. Um, and I have to tell you, it has been an incredible comfort for me to show up at all of these meetings on the far west side and all over the county uh, and to see Dominic there. He's done an incredible job. Um, I'm really proud of him and I know you will be too. My name is Jose Garza um, and I am running to be your district attorney because right, right here in Travis County, our criminal justice system is broken. In the most progressive county in the state, over 70% of people sitting in our jail have not been convicted of a crime. They are there because they can't afford to pay bail. They are sitting in our jail because they can't afford to buy their freedom. In the most progressive county in the state, 9% of our population is black, but over 25% of the population of our jail is black. In the blueberry, in the middle of the tomato soup, our district attorney has lost the trust of survivors of sexual assault, and at the same time, continues to lock people up because they are poor or struggling with substance use. And that is not justice, 
And you know what? It doesn't make us safer. But the good news is, it doesn't have to be that way. We have the power to fix this. I started my career as a public defender down on the Texas-Mexico border, um, both at the state and federal level. And every single day in that work, I saw how our criminal justice system weighs most heavily on working class people and people of color. It has been um, the privilege of my career to serve as the executive director of Workers' Defense Project. And in that work, I have seen how regular folks all throughout this county, how each and every one of you has the power to change our community, to change our county, and to completely reimagine our criminal justice system. I believe that together we can build a community that invests in working class people instead of having a system that locks people up because they're poor. We can um, end cash bail, thank you. We can end cash bail right here in Travis County and make sure at the same time that uh, people who pose a threat to our community stay in custody. It doesn't have to be a choice. We can um, create a community, and I can't believe I have to say this in 2019, but we can create a community where women are believed and survivors of sexual assault are treated with dignity and respect. But in order to do that, we have to um, elect a district attorney who is capable of sitting down with survivors and advocates in order to find um, the justice that they seek and that they deserve. We can prioritize um, violent crime, we can prioritize fraud and other types of financial crime that prevent working class people from having the stability that they need to provide for their families. But we can't do that and continue to use so many of our resources to lock up people who are poor and people suffering with substance use. Together though, uh, we can build a, a criminal justice system that reflects our values and we can restore trust to the district attorney's office. Now, um, at the end of last week, I put out, I think, a pretty comprehensive plan um, with some steps that I think we can and should take in order to do just that. And I want to talk to you, if I can, just about a few of them. Um, look, here in Travis County, we should not be prosecuting low-level drug offenses, period. Um, the evidence is... The evidence is overwhelmingly clear that for every day a person is in jail, charged with a low-level drug offense, the likelihood that they will commit another crime goes up. Prosecuting people for low-level drug offenses makes us less safe. And when we spend so many resources focused on prosecuting people for low-level drug offenses, we are diverting resources away from violent crimes like sexual assault. So in, in 2018, our district attorney's office prosecuted less than 10% of sexual assault cases brought to her office by local law enforcement, less than 10%. In the same year, our district attorney's office prosecuted close to 40% of all drug offenses brought to her office by local law enforcement. That is the way our resources are being used right now in the most progressive county in the state. One of the things that I think we need to do um, immediately when we win is um, rejoin the sexual assault um, Response and Resource Team, or the SART, um, which was a table that both law enforcement and uh, advocates and survivors used to sit at together to find solutions to a culture here in Travis County that has permitted 
far too many sexual assaults to occur. One of the first things that the current district attorney did when she was elected was walk away from that collaboration. Um, I think it's time to get back to work. I have pledged um, to stop, um, to, to not seek the death penalty. I have pledged um, not to ask that juveniles be tried as adults. Um, I have made clear that sentences of 20 years or more will be the exception in our office, not the rule. Um, together we can end mass incarceration here in Travis County and make our county a national leader in criminal justice reform and in safety. I hope you guys will um, check out our website, Jose for DA. I hope you will get involved actively in this conversation and join this movement. Thank you very much. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, the votes on this stuff happen next month, right? So October 15th, we're gonna hold a candidate forum. Prior to that, we're still working on location. We've also grilled both of these guys for over an hour each. So we're going to deliver a written form of that so you don't have to listen to an hour of us grilling them um, and give you like a, a short s summary of it. Uh, that was, I think, most of it. Uh, unless, is there anything else for the voting for next meeting that we need to cover? Uh, 